We've diverted this stagnant river into an old agricultural field, overrun by invasive plants. And the results are already really, really exciting. We've managed to flood an area larger than 50 football fields, unclogging the river and creating a thriving new wetland, which will act as a long-term refuge for wildlife. An island of life in amongst the endless agricultural landscape. But this didn't happen overnight. Every step that I take is releasing these, uh, these bubbles that are stored in, in the bottom of this, of this creek. And it's really stinky. Picture like, um, like a hot spring, but significantly worse. And yeah, this, this river is not dead, but it is, it is in trouble. And that is why we are trying to help it. And in the meantime, or with that help, we also want to do an extra thing, which is to create a whole new wetland. My visit to this stinky part of the brook comes at a very exciting time. Because after two years of planning and satisfying the various bureaucratic requirements of this type of work, we finally have the green light. Siggy, our master floodman, and the team at Bros are ready to start digging. Our original plan was to dig from here to the corner of this wet forest and then towards the field. However, after all the planning and consulting with the local farmer, we ended up deciding to dig it from here, connecting directly with this little wetland, and then digging the rest on the other side towards the field. And with everything ready, the contractors began digging in the early spring of 2024, starting with the main segments of the channel. And by May, those were ready and had already flooded with rainwater. So let's begin this, uh, this tour by getting out of the muck, out of the uh, Chili's brook, and um, start to show you where this channel is going to go. The area near the brook has been cleared of trees to allow for the building of the channel here where I'm walking right now, which will connect with the next segment that has already been dug through the forest. Now, this is a brand new channel, so there's little to see in terms of plants, but the groundwater that has flooded in has already attracted the first inhabitants, which is always cool to see. So this area here is where we've had to make a trade-off. We've essentially carved the channel through the forest. We've had to cut down some of this forest in order to create this channel. And the trade-off to me and to those running this project and who understand the local environment here, it's, it's trade-off that's worthwhile because with this, we are creating, we're not only fixing the riparian habitat over there, but we're also creating the super rare wet sedge meadows. And, and that is so much rarer than the forested habitats that, that we have here that it becomes worthwhile doing the trade. That's just, that's just how it is, pragmatic rewilding. I mean, that there was pretty quick. This is the, uh, just the side of where the uh, channel was dug and there's already a couple of burrows in them. Nature is so fast, so opportunistic. I think uh, that was a nutria, which uh, is a, uh, not a native animal, but cool nonetheless. I, uh, I had fun filming it for, for a moment there. And um, now we're getting to yeah, the, the main area that this channel connects to. So as the channel ends here, you can see, here it goes. And then it connects with a, a lake, which I've shown you in one of the previous videos. This is a lake that's, that's been here a while. It, it essentially flooded through groundwater but now we're bringing an additional amount of water to it, or we will be bringing an additional amount of water to it from the Chili's Brook, which, um, which is also really exciting. It's a bit of a side feature of this project to expand the wetland among this forest. On the other side of the flooded forest was the last big segment that was already dug, and it was also flooded with groundwater. And now at this point, the only missing parts were these ones here that needed to have underground passages. The work on this went on over the last weeks of spring and the early summer. The difference with these segments is that we need the water to run underground. Here near the brook, it needs to allow the neighboring farmer easy access to his fields. And down over here, we need to make sure that this little public dirt road stays usable. And once these were finished, it was finally time for the big inauguration. Unfortunately, I couldn't be there on the day itself, but Siggy and the Bros team were there, and so were a bunch of television networks and other forms of traditional media who wanted to report on the project, which was really cool to see. 
and I was also really happy to see these videos of the water rushing in to provide new life and new opportunity in these fields. And I do genuinely think that this project rightfully got all of this attention because it is a very neat solution. It uses two places which are under-delivering from a natural perspective, a eutrophic river which lost its natural ending, and a dry field covered in non-native invasive plants, and it turns them both into something better. When I came here in the spring, this look, uh, looked like a lost cause kind of place, you know? Really sad. And look at it now. That is a very big difference. It will be really interesting to see what a few full yearly cycles will do to this place. Hopefully it will clean up some of this mess and make a dent in the problem. However, when it comes to the flooded fields, the results are a lot more obvious. So let's go check out the flooding. I started this visit like I usually do, by heading out with Sigi to get the lay of the land. Proper wetlands. Yeah, that's really cool, man. Still not in the, in the middle. We're still not in the middle. Man, this is huge. The middle is where, where are the trees. The middle is where the trees are, all the way in the back. Yeah. This is really big, man. And it's flooded all the way through to there. Yeah, but some of the areas are like, there is Again, deeper that water. For example, here there is like, it's too high, so it's not under the water. So it's really different patches. But that's good, no? I mean, that's what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, nice. Shall we check what's in there? Yeah. On our way, we picked up one of the camera traps that the team has left here and took a quick sneak peek at what animals I might find here over the next few days. Wild boar. Wild boar? Yeah. But that's like, that's mama. That's a big boar. There were all kinds of animals on these camera traps, which was really cool to see. However, some of the more important wetland species, such as birds, amphibians, and voles, are very hard to film like this. So, over the next few days, I decided to explore the wetland calmly by myself, to see the more distant parts and to try to find some of the wildlife. Okay, here we go. We are now getting into the thick of this wetland. And um, I have to say, I'm a little bit uh, Concerned? Okay, well, maybe concerned is a big word. I'm, um, I'm mindful. I'm a little bit mindful of the big mama boar that we saw on the cameras that Siggy picked up yesterday. Uh, I would not want to get uh, on the wrong uh, side of that uh, mama boar if I get too close. So I'll be making a bit of noise, I think, as I move through this wetland, which might scare the birds, but I'd rather see nothing than see one of those boar up close. As I walked into this place, into this maze of plants and water, I must say that it genuinely felt like I was walking into a wild area. It is the same feeling you get when walking in the Amazon rainforest or when diving on a wonderful tropical coral reef. It just feels wild and to me that matters a lot. Exploring this kind of a place is always very exciting and clearly distinct from other places that we as humans can't help but control and regulate tightly. It leaves me with this nervous excitement that is hard to describe, the kind of feeling that you only get in a wild area like this. You just observe things more closely and you never know what might just be around the corner. Somehow, the potential feels bigger, which makes this whole place feel bigger than it actually is. It makes it feel deeper and richer in experiences and opportunity. That's why I work hard restoring nature, and thankfully, I'm not alone. <laughs> Me and Matt started Mossier seven years ago and have slowly built a team that also shares our values, including our own rewilding teams in four different countries, each one trying to save one of these magical places. And it is also what allows us to support amazing partners like Bros that fight hard to bring back doom places like this. And this is all only made possible by our amazing Mossy Earth members that support this work directly with a monthly contribution. We don't have large sponsors, there's no huge company or a huge donor running the show, we have no debt and we have no investors asking for results. All we have is you watching this video and others like you that care about these places and want to see them restored and protected. That sounds like something you'd like to support. 
then please consider joining us at mossy.earth. Every bit helps. And uh, if you're not ready to uh, become a member, then uh, please consider subscribing to the channel here on YouTube. I know that only, well, well, less than half of you are subscribed to the channel. And I think it would send a really positive, strong signal to YouTube if you did subscribe. It's a free way to help. So please consider doing so if you enjoy our content. Okay, now, uh, yeah, time to go explore this wetland and uh, hope that uh, Mama Boar doesn't find us. So as you can see, this area here is already looking a lot like a wetland. And that is because it is already a wetland and it has been a wetland in the past. I'm surrounded by wetland plant species. And that is because this area here used to flood a few times per year for a few months and that is enough to, uh, to allow these plants here to thrive and the other plants not to. And what we are doing essentially by connecting the Chili's Brook to this place is to supercharge, to help expand this wetland so that it can, you know, accommodate more wildlife, more wetland species and that we can create a little bit more of this really rare habitat. Based on our calculations, there were around 10 hectares here that would flood a few times per year, mostly in these two depressions here and here. With this intervention, we hope to turn that into 40 hectares of wetland that has water year round. Now, by doing so, we've clearly made a decision here to prioritize having more of this, the native wetland habitat, and less of this, the fields of invasive species. And I think it's always important to justify this clearly. So let's start by looking at the problem we have with these fields. The main species you see here are asters, namely the New York aster and the landsleeved aster. And as often is the case with invasives, these species evolved in a completely different landscape. These ones come from the American Northeast, which has its own checks and balances in place that allow these lovely plants to thrive in balance with the rest of the ecosystem. However, once they arrived in Europe, many of those checks were not present and they were easily able to outcompete native species in these mixed environments where water does not clearly dominate. In the long run, this reduces plant diversity, of course, but it also impacts all the different species that have evolved alongside these wetlands over thousands of years, risking their long-term populations as well. Here we have a huge field of asters. So I think essentially this area wouldn't have been you know, flooding on a regular basis. Um, but now it does, now it has permanent water. In fact, I'm, you know, standing in water right now. So um, these will die and get slowly replaced by species that like water. And that will be a very clear sign that we are successfully expanding this wetland and creating additional habitat for these wetland species because there is, plenty of this around in this whole region but that over there is kind of rare and that's why this intervention matters. I was really happy to see water here because it's the beginning of this whole transformation and for a sneak peek at what the future might hold I visited another wetland last spring, one that Braz has also recreated using water from this brook and this place looks amazing. So this here, where we are right now, is actually what uh, what we're looking to recreate on the other side, where we are directing the water from the, the Chili's Brook. These are uh, wet sedge uh, meadows that uh, Siggy here has been working on for a few years now to, to try to create this really important and rare habitat that of course supports a variety of species but here is particularly targeted at the Pannonian root vault. Now, back in the new wetland we are now creating, we thankfully also have some sedges that are ready to spread out when given the opportunity. So those are the key changes we expect to see in this wetland, and we will be able to measure the progress by taking regular orthophoto mosaics with the drone. But what about the wildlife? Well, I walked around the wetland using the trails the animals make, and Sometimes I could also catch a glimpse of an animal dashing away from me, but I wasn't having much luck. That is, until this happened. I'd say there's really two areas here that uh, are worth uh, mentioning. Oh my god. I'm looking at a root bowl. Holy fuck. I 
I've been walking around here for three days looking for wildlife. All I've gotten was the, the ass of a roe deer uh, running away from me as fast as it could. A few blurry birds, again, running away from me as fast as it could. And some of these, uh, you know, uh, birds hunting in the distance. And that's it. That's all I've managed. While it has been, of course, a pleasure to explore this, I, you know, a bit disappointed not to be able to see or film wildlife properly. And then this animal, the animal I would have liked to see the most, top of the list for me, just swims right across behind the camera. I mean, that was, that was amazing. So, so lucky. And I got at least one, one photo that is reasonably sharp of it. Otherwise I'd be crushed. So, uh, yeah, wow. That, that was very cool. Now, having had some time to look at these images and uh, having shown them to the Bros team, I've come to think that maybe this is a common root vol and not the Pannonian root vol I was hoping for. However, identifying such a small animal from a photo like this is quite hard. So let's just say for my sake that this is the one and only Micratus economus meheli that we work so hard to save in these wetlands. So yeah, really stoked to see this flooded. It is something I've been waiting for for a while. And I, above all, am really excited to see how it's going to progress. It's, uh, it's this kind of transformational side of these uh, wetland projects that that is yeah really really exciting to see but uh yeah again a huge thank you to all the mossy earth members who made this possible and if you're not yet a member then please consider joining us at mossy.earth it's uh it's amazing that you enable us to do this until next time cheers <laughs>